Hello, this is John Black Super Chemist. I'm going to show you how to make an anhydrous uh, isopropyl alcohol, which some people call it 2-propanol, propan 2 all. There's many names for it, rubbing alcohol. I basically got this ninety-one percent isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol at the uh, grocery store. And we're gonna take a hundred milliliters out and see to try and make it anhydrous. So I got a hundred milliliters of ninety-one percent uh, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I'm gonna put in there. So I got about thirty grams of and I just cut for sulfate. The reason I use 50, I mean uh, 30 grams of uh, copper sulfate was because it's a pentahydrate, which means it can hold five hydrates. Um, I figured there might be about maybe 12 milliliters of water in that alcohol. <coughs> That's less than a mole of water because a mole would be 18 milliliters. All right, so. I wanted to put something in there that it would at least absorb a mole. I wanted to do overkill, you know what I mean? Uh, I know that the copper sulfate anhydrous is like 160 grams or something like that a mole. So I figured one fifth of that or one fifth of 150 would be easier to figure out, which would be 30 grams. Uh, so I think I put like 30, 32 grams in there, something like that. Um, that was my reasoning behind that weight was a if it's a pentahydrate that means to come absorb five moles of water if I divide it by five then it can it can absorb one mole of water right <clears throat> mostly anhydrous I'm gonna start this up so it spins We'll cover it up with cellophane on the top and I'm gonna let it spin it. I'm gonna let it stir for about 20 minutes. Alright, I let that stir for like a couple hours and I let it sit overnight. Time to filter it out. See how I turned the valve on so I still keep my vacuum and I can turn the pump off. At least for a little bit. See then it slows down. Then I'll have to open the valve, start it back up again and get my vacuum again. Alright, now I dumped that into this cup here because I didn't want this to evaporate putting a vacuum on this. And I kept the vacuum. You can see I got about another 10 milliliters in there. So I got about 75 milliliters in there. Plus, say 10 in there, that's about 85 milliliters. Um, I did a density test. It was 0.78, and the density for it should be 0.786. Um, so it's pretty anhydrous. I just want to show you something. I poured some more just. A whole bunch of water, no, not a whole bunch, but a little bit on top there, and you can see that it can turn more blue, meaning that it could have absorbed more water if there was more in there. Watch, I'm gonna put some more in there. Watch as it goes through there. See how it's turning more and more blue? And that's because it still has the ability to absorb more more water. Hasn't there's no there was no water that proves there was no water in there to absorb or would have. Let's do a little test with it. So I'm gonna throw some anhydrous copper sulfate in there and then you can see but see how white that is? I mean that's white. Now I'm going to stir it up for about 20 minutes and see what, what happens with it. You can see, 
I'll let it settle back down. It's still white as can be. I mean, there's no blue in there. See how white that is? You know that's anhydrous. So I'm just set up for a simple distillation. I got that coffee sulfate in there. That way, in case any water can absorb it. You can see, you know, it's coming over. A little cloud there. I actually might have to turn it down here a second. You can see the vapors. It's actually a great shot. Well, that's basically it. I'm just going to distill that over. That first, first little bit that comes over, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to discard. By discard, I mean put it in a bottle saying almost anhydrous. Just in case there's a little bit of a couple of drops of water in there. And then everything after the first couple of drops, bam. I will collect. Remember, don't distill your pot down to down to nothing, down to dryness. Leave something in there. You can always add it to the stuff. You know, those first couple milliliters that you distilled over. You can mix it with this pot and save it. See, there's the receiving flask. You don't have to go slow because you're just basically trying to get the solid, get the solids out. So you can go at a pretty good rate. In one by a drip a second, so and I know me after so long I'll jack that up so. Goes faster. All right, well, there's what I got. You can see it's crystal clear. Almost 70 milliliters. I figure around 10, 10 milliliters was water, say, you know what I mean? I took it all the way down to 70, but it is, and I still have a couple, a little bit in here, but we'll take it up to exactly 70 now that I see it. Um, <coughs> So it lasts a little bit, but it's definitely anhydrous. I always remember, science is great.